Yu-Gi-Oh! is a sadistic nightmare, and if you want to know what spiraling into the depths of Satan's toilet bowl feels like, I'd recommend engaging in American political discourse. But if you'd also like to spend gargantuan amounts of money as you do so, Yu-Gi-Oh! has you covered. Hyperbole aside, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a rewarding, engaging game that's a lot easier to understand and get into than you'd think at first glance. And with Master Duel's shockingly fair monetization, now's a fantastic time to start if you're just looking to casually engage in the game for fun. The game itself is quite simple. Two players, each armed with a deck of cards, aim to kick the snot out of each other with their big monsters. Each player has a set number of life points, and making the enemy's life points disappear will win you the game. Decks are composed of three types of cards, monsters, spells, and traps. Monsters go in the front and are the rusty crowbars you will use to beat your opponent's skull in. Monsters are divided into levels from 1 to 12. Level 1 to 4 monsters can be summoned without tributing or sacrificing an existing monster. However, level 5 to 6 monsters require one tribute and 7 and above level monsters will require two. Monsters have two main stats, their attack and defense, and they can be set in attack position or defense position. Smacking your opponent will deal damage based on your monster's attack to their life points. Smacking an enemy's monster that has also in attack position will make them fight with copious amounts of sexual tension. The one with more attack, the top, will destroy the one with less attack, the bottom, and deal damage to the losing monster's player equal to the difference in their attack. Smacking a defense position monster will deal no damage to the enemy player, no matter how weak and flimsy they are. Spell cards cause special effects at the time of their activation. Normal spells pop off an effect when they activate. Continuous spells will create an effect that stays as long as the spell card stays on the field. Quick play spell cards are trap cards that dress up in green because it makes them feel pretty. Speaking of, trap cards are cards you set face down to play coy and bat your eyelashes at your opponent. During your opponent turn, if they do something that triggers the trap, you can activate it, causing an effect that triggers during your opponent's turn. Generally speaking, your monsters will do battle with your opponent's monsters, your spells will support them and barrage your enemy with effects, and your traps will disrupt your enemy's plans during their turn. Congratulations! You're now a moderate knowledgeable Yu-Gi-Oh player 20 years ago. But don't worry, catching up 20 years will only take a few minutes. Turns typically have several phases. Draw phase, standby phase, main phase 1, battle phase, main phase 2, and end phase. That's a lot of phases. They're not all that complicated. Draw phase is when you draw a card at the very start of your turn. Holy shit, who would have thought? The standby phase is just a step in time when some effects take place at the start of the turn. After you draw, but before you can do anything in main phase. If an effect says you can special summon this monster, but destroy it during your next turn standby phase, then during your next turn, this phase is when that effect triggers. If no effect is set to trigger during the next standby phase, then it just passes by. Your main phase is when most of the action happens. You can normal summon or tribute summon one monster, special summon as many monsters as you want, activate spells, and set traps here. Next comes battle phase where you're allowed to smack up people that disagree with you about children's television shows. The very first turn of the duel has no battle phase because that would be wildly unfair. This is the only time Yu-Gi-Oh! will ever stop something from happening because it would be unfair. Main phase 2 is just like the first one except after battle phase, letting you recover if traps or other effects tripped you up in battle phase. Finally, in phase is just like standby phase, a part of the turn that lets tr effects trigger at the end of a turn instead of the start. When you take your turn, you'll take each of these phases in turn, then your opponent will do the same until your character arcs resolve and you go from enemies to lovers, like every AO3 author always wanted. In modern Yu-Gi-Oh, most decks are of one of two types, beat stick decks or disruption decks. Beat stick decks are all about getting out the biggest, strongest monster possible, with as many protections as possible, and violently violating your opponent with it. Disruption decks aren't as able to get out strong monsters, but with special effects, they can stuff their opponent's ability to do fucking anything, letting them win with less firepower. There are a variety of other decks, like burn decks that deal damage directly to the opponent, bypassing battle with effects that deal damage, Exodia decks are all about drawing as fast as a fairy artist commissioned five grand to make God cry and trigger Exodia's instant win, or stall decks that can't win, but also can't lose and can cycle cards infinitely until the enemy quits or runs out of cards. But when it comes to practical decks, beat sticks and disruption decks are the most common forms. When you first join Master Duel, and you'd better because it's the only modern way to play Yu-Gi-Oh that isn't 100% bullshit, it's only 50% bullshit, you'll be prompted to choose a basic Blue Eyes deck or a basic Dark Magician deck, because this franchise just can't let go of its first husbandos. Do note that these decks are trash and full of useless cards, however they also have the core cards of proper Blue Eyes and Dark Magician decks. Playing the tutorials will get you gems, which you can spend on packs to get random bundles of cards. Even if you get cards you don't care about, you can sacrifice them to the devil for materials to make the cards you want. This is based on rarity. Cards will give you materials related to how rare they are, and you can only make cards of equal rarity with those materials. It's a good idea to save up and spend gems in bundles of 1,000, as this guarantees super rare and ultra rare cards, the rarest kinds. Gems can also be spent on structured decks, pre-made decks that are actually like 90% of the way there to being a viable deck. If you happen to want to use an archetype that has a structured deck available, congratulations! This is all a lot easier. Choose the scaly fetishist deck or the twink deck, play the tutorial, spend your gems, and break down cards you don't want, then craft cards you do want. Dark Magician has a structured deck, and while Blue Eyes doesn't, Dragon Maid does, and Dragon Maid works very well with Blue Eyes decks as supporting cards. Either way, you will now have a deck that is viable enough to play ranked. Rank can seem intimidating, especially if your first match is against a tryhard sweat that cycles 30 billion effects to whip out the super cock thunder splitter dragon 9000 with 20 effects and 9 million attack. However, losing bears almost no negative consequences and winning gets you 100 gems with every winning duel. 
completing challenges like summoning five monsters or going out and talking to a girl will reward extra gems, making it vastly easier to enhance your deck and branch out and create more. And there you have it. This is everything you need to know to get started with Yu-Gi-Oh. Go out there, have fun, fucking whatever, do whatever you want, I'm not your dad.